Well, good morning. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, as of yesterday, the CDC reported that nearly 741,000 vaccine doses have been administered in Iowa. Uh, almost 23% of all eligible Iowans age 18 and up, and almost 70%, uh, 69.5% of older um, Iowans age 65 and above have received at least their first dose. In the last seven days, more than 121,000 doses have been administered and nearly 85,000 were first doses. As supply continues to increase, our vaccine administration rates are keeping pace and tens of thousands of Iowans are now getting their critical first dose each week. However, we're working to resolve a lag in the timely administration of second doses, the recommended 21-day a window for Pfizer vaccine and the 28-day window for Moderna. As of February 27th, more than 344,500 COVID-19 vaccine series had been initiated, meaning individuals received their first dose. Of that, 41,431 people, or 12%, are still waiting for their second dose. Even though it's now been more than the 28 to 28-day window since they had their first shot. In reviewing boost doses or second doses by vaccine provider, the Department of Public Health has determined that more than 32,000 or 77 percent of the overdue booster doses are among pharmacy providers. Earlier this week, the Department of Public Health contacted participating pharmacists to identify what, what may be causing the issue and how we can work together to resolve it. They determined that a file reporting second doses administered by the long-term care pharmacy partners failed to transfer and therefore the doses are not yet accounted for in the reporting system. The Department of Public Health confirmed that this should account for the bulk of the second doses presumed to be overdue, so the issue should be resolved and doses reported soon. On Sunday, the FDA and the CDC announced their final approval of the emergency authorization for the newest vaccine from Johnson & Johnson, an exciting advancement in our fight against and recovery from COVID-19. The addition of the J&J &J vaccine to our nat national supply is truly a game changer. A first dose vaccine means twice as many people can be fully vaccinated in a fraction of the time it takes to complete two doses spaced at least 21 and 20 apart. Plus, it can be stored at root, uh, routine refrigeration temperatures, allowing greater flexibility to be used in a variety of settings, like workplaces, mass vaccination clinics, and of course, rural communities. But unfortunately, some critics are suggesting that the J&J &J vaccine is somehow inferior to those from Pfizer and Moderna because its efficacy rate is lower. This information is misleading and quite frankly, it's irresponsible to position any vaccine as a, as a less desirable option when it's undergone the same rigorous clinical trials to test its safety and efficacy and has re, uh, received approval by the FDA and the CDC. Especially at a time when vaccination is paramount to our recovery, our recovery and our supply continues to be limited. As you're weighing your op options for vaccination, it's important that you're getting, uh, getting your information from credible sources. Today, I am pleased to be joined by a medical expert who understands vaccines and the science behind developing, testing, and approving them. Dr. Pat Winokur, Executive Dean of the University of Iowa's College of Medicine, Senior Associate Director of the Institute for Clinical and Translational Science, Infectious Disease Specialist, and she led the team responsible for running the University of Iowa study site of the Pfizer vaccine trial. Dr. Winokur, thanks for joining us today to help Iowans better understand the differences that they J and J vaccine and what it means for them as they prepare to be vaccinated. Thank you, Governor Reynolds. I am really appreciative that you've invited me today because there are a lot of nuances to this data, and I think there are some very important points. You made many of them. I'm going to reiterate them, but perhaps put them in a slightly different uh, spin. We are very encouraged to have a third vaccine approved under emergency use authorization. We know that the key to controlling this pandemic is getting as many people vaccinated as fast as possible. That is gonna flatten the curve. That's gonna prevent spread from person to person. 
as you said, at the University of Iowa, we are very proud of the fact that we participated in several of the clinical trials to develop COVID-19 vaccines. We first participated in the Pfizer vaccine trial. That one achieved emergency use authorization and was with the first vaccines available. We are currently gathering the data for the Novavax vaccine, which will be another vaccine that should have data available to the FDA in April. We had over 450 Iowans that helped us generate this data, and we are so proud of their participation and all they did to help us gather this data. But I think what really is important today is because we participated in these other trials, it allows us the ability to look at the Johnson & Johnson trial. And I can assure you that the Johnson & Johnson studies adhered to all of the safety and efficacy standards that were required by FDA. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine does have several major advantages, like you stated. It is a vaccine that has been approved for use as a single dose. It is hard to schedule two doses for an individual. It is hard to keep all of those windows straight. The different vaccines have different windows. Getting the vaccines for that is hard. So having a vaccine that can be used with a single dose helps us a lot. The fact that it can be stored at refrigerated temperatures, this is a great vaccine. For example, in a private practice where you could have that vaccine stored and have your patients come in at any time to get that vaccine. These are really helpful pieces of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Also, this vaccine is about 70% effective. People have gotten caught up on that 70% versus 90% or whatever. But remember, this vaccine, when you really look carefully at the data, it is exceptionally good at preventing severe disease and hospitalizations. We look at flu vaccines every year, and we're happy to have flu vaccines. And under the best of circumstances, flu vaccines are about 70% effective. Oh, though, that those flu vaccines make a huge difference in places like nursing homes and the spread in school systems, helping damp down the flu spread every year. So 70% effective is outstanding. But the fact that these vaccines are close to 100% effective at present preventing hospitalizations is the statistic that people should be watching because we need to protect the hospitals. People can get some sniffles, that's okay, but we don't want them to get pneumonia. We don't want them to end up in the hospital. These are great vaccines. The other thing that you need to know with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is that this vaccine, because of the timing of when it was studied, it was studied at a time when we had a lot of these unusual variant viruses circulating. And what we found with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is that it is really good at preventing severe disease and hospitalization when we have these variants circulating. So that's a new piece of data that we don't have from the other vaccines. So I think the key point is that this vaccine is safe, it is extremely effective. We encourage anybody who has the opportunity to get a vaccine to get the first vaccine that's available to them. The vaccines are safe, they're effective, they're exceptionally good at preventing severe disease. No matter what vaccine you get, we still are recommending that people adhere to mask wearing, social distancing, and avoiding large ga gatherings, because together, those protective measures on top of the vaccine are pretty much 100% effective. And we want to get this vaccine under control as fast as we can. Everybody who gets vaccinated helps us stop the spread of COVID-19 and helps us put an end to this pandemic, which is what we all are looking for to get back to a normal life. So thank you for inviting me. 
Thank you so much for that important information and for your expert medical opinion, Dr. Uh, Winokur. In fact, I'm taking your words to heart. Uh, today at the end of my press conference, I'll be getting vaccinated with the J&J &J vaccine, and I wouldn't ask Iowans to do anything that I'm not willing to do. I trust that this vaccine is both safe and effective, and I appreciate the convenience of getting it done with just one dose. So today I'm choosing the J&J &J vaccine for myself. Uh, but, but before we let you go, Dr. Winokur, I want to commend you and your team again for just the outstanding work that you've done and are continuing to do on COVID vaccine trials. We are so very proud knowing that Iowa is playing such uh, an important role in ensuring a safe and effective vaccine supply for the nation. So thank you. Uh, it's a heartfelt thanks from Iowans uh, on behalf of the work that you all are doing. Thank you. Almost as soon as it was authorized for emergency use, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine began shipping to states across the country. I'm pleased to report that the 25,600 doses allocated to Iowa are arriving now and tomorrow and will begin vaccinating the next tier of eligible Iowans, which includes some workforce populations who've been essential to keeping the critical supply chains moving over the last year. In total, our plan is to vaccinate nearly 160,000 employees who work or live in congregate settings at the 456 food processing, egg production, and manufacturing and distribution companies across Iowa. We anticipate that it will take uh, five weeks to vaccinate this population. Of course, that always depends on the vaccine uh, allocations that we receive. Yesterday, during a White House COVID-19 briefing with governors, we were told to expect that it will take a few weeks for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine supply to uh, increase and normalize. Johnson & Johnson will not be included in the national allocation next week, and the number of doses we receive will likely fluctuate throughout the month. However, thanks to a new partnership uh, with Merck that was announced just yesterday to increase production, of the vaccine, it's projected that four to six million total doses could be allocated nationally each week starting in late March and potentially increase to a five to six million, do uh, million doses in April. For now, we are moving forward with our initial Johnson & Johnson supply, distributing all 25,600 doses to 51 companies in 17 counties, which collectively employ nearly 30,000 essential workers and employer vaccination clinics will begin as soon as tomorrow. As I mentioned earlier, being able to store the vaccine at normal refrigeration temperatures makes it possible to administer it on site in a work environment and the single dose means limited di disruption to normal business operations and really the ability to offer every employee a safe and effective vaccine. As Dr. Winokur confirmed earlier, every vaccine option is a good option to to prevent the negative health outcomes that are associated with COVID-19, especially uh, serious illness and hospitalization. In the coming weeks, as the Johnson & Johnson supply increases, we'll continue to allocate these doses to complete the remaining workforce vaccination clinics as quickly as possible. Since the very first days of the pandemic, the 211 call center has provided an important service to Iowans, answering their questions about COVID-19 and directing them to resources to assist with a variety of needs. Now 211 is stepping up to play what may be their most important role yet. As I mentioned last week, the call center is expanding to include a team of 75 vaccine navigators dedicated to helping older Iowans get vaccinated and to get their lives back to normal. This service is, is only for adults 65 and older who are in need of scheduling support because they don't have access to a computer or aren't comfortable using one. They may not have a family member, friend or neighbor who can assist them or they haven't yet been successful in getting an appointment even after several attempts to schedule one. Starting next Tuesday, March 9th, these individuals can call 211 and speak with a vaccine navigator who will schedule an appointment for them at a nearby, nearby Hy-Vee pharmacy. ...to launch the vaccine navigator program just days from now, I thought it would be helpful for elderly Iowans to know how the process will work. So today I'm pleased to have Melissa McCoy, the director of the 211 call center, here to walk through uh, the process step by step. So Melissa, thank you for joining us today to help everyone understand what will happen when they call 211 uh, for scheduling help beginning next week. 
Thank you, Governor Reynolds, for the opportunity to join you today and for the confidence that you have placed in 211 Iowa to serve the people of our state throughout the pandemic as the COVID-19 hotline. We are honored to be part of the pandemic response and to collaborate with you, your team, and your community partners to now serve as vaccine navigators for those who are eligible. As you have shared, beginning next Tuesday, March 9th, 211 vaccine to Iowans age 65 and older who don't have access to the internet or who need support with the technology in getting a vaccine appointment scheduled at a high beat. 211 uses a telelanguage translation services to offer this opportunity to more than individuals of 150 languages and services are accessible to people with disabilities. Callers will be asked for their full name, birth dates, phone number, and an email address if they do have one available. We will work with them to schedule both their first and second dose appointments at a Hy-Vee pharmacy that is most convenient to them. Individuals will learn which brand of the vaccine they will receive at their appointment. 211 vaccine navigators will not have this information when the appointment is being scheduled. Upon scheduling, callers should be prepared to receive the date, time, and Hy-Vee pharmacy location of their appointment. You should plan to arrive at your appointment at least 10 minutes early and bring your Medicare or insurance card if possible. Remember, there is no cost to you, the individual who is receiving the vaccine. At this time, 211 vaccine navigators cannot assist with rescheduling appointments. If rescheduling or canceling an appointment is necessary, that individual will need to contact that Hy-Vee pharmacy directly where their appointment was scheduled. We will provide you with that number as we set your appointment. Vaccine navigators can also refer you to transportation resources if needed. For anyone unfamiliar with 211 beyond serving as the COVID-19 hotline and as vaccine navigators, we are here to provide comprehensive information and resource referrals, connecting Iowa residents in all 99 counties to essential programs and service they need. There is no cost access to one and we are available 24-7. We've had tremendous luck in reaching out to those who had signed up through their AAAs in the last couple weeks through their AAAs and getting them signed up for their appointments through Hy-Vee pharmacies. They've been very, very thankful to receive a call back. Even if they'd already got vaccinated, they were just happy to know that their AAAs were able to pass their information on to us and even for us to reach back out to ensure that that was a closed loop. Again, Thank you, Governor Reynolds and the Iowa Department of Public Health for your partnership in serving Iowans throughout this challenging time. I appreciate this opportunity to share more about 211 Iowa and our team of vaccine navigators. Thanks, Melissa. I appreciate everything that you and your team are doing to make this service possible, and that includes hiring and training 75 vaccine navigators uh, in just the last week. So thank you for that great effort, and I really appreciate the partnership with the Iowa Department of Public Health. And as Melissa said earlier, if you need to reschedule your appointment for any reason, be sure to call the Hy-Vee Pharmacy directly to help you. And remember, 211 isn't scheduling appointments just yet, but they'll start taking calls from Iowans age 65 and up who need scheduling support starting next week, Tuesday, March 9th. Um, last Friday, I, real quick, we launched uh, vaccine.iowa.gov, a new website that offers a central resource for information about being vaccinated in Iowa. Since going live, we've had about 35,000 people who have used the vaccine provider search tool uh, to find a vaccine near them. Earlier this morning, we updated the provider search tool to include a new map feature that displays all of the providers in your area based on your home address or zip code and the radius that you select. So by hovering over the pin on the map, you can see the provider, the address, uh, and even click to call or visit their website for more information. It will also provide a list of all locations uh, in your area, in the area you designated. This and so the site will continue to update with new information on a regular basis. So keep checking back uh, frequently. And finally, as we wrap up Monday, it's hard to believe will mark the one year. It will mark one year since a global pandemic became a stark reality at home. On the evening of Sunday, March 8th, 
I spoke to you from the Capitol to announce that we'd confirm the first three cases of COVID-19 in Iowa. It's hard for me to express how I feel about this milestone, as, I sure, as I'm sure it is for all of you as well. In some ways, I can hardly believe it's already been a year. In others, it seems like forever, since almost anything has felt normal. And yet, finally, there's a renewed sense of hope and optimism. Not that long ago, we could only imagine what it would feel like when vaccines became available and when we could again enjoy the quality of life that we value so deeply as Iowans. Well, that time is now. To think that in less than a year, there are already three vaccines available in our state and nearly 70% of older Iowans have had at least one dose and that it's anticipated there will be enough vaccine supply by the end of May for every adult nationwide. But as we reflect on this one year anniversary, we cannot and should not forget those who lost their lives to COVID-19. On Monday, I will ask that you join me in remembering them and praying for the peace and comfort of those who's, who loved them. In the meantime, we'll continue to move forward as Iowans do with resilience, tenacity, and hope. We know how to endure, and while the pandemic is not over yet, a new day is ahead, and so let's embrace that together. As part of moving ahead, I wanna encourage every Iowan to plan to be vaccinated as soon as you're able to do so. I'm pleased that many Iowans have had that opportunity already, in care, including our healthcare workforce, our long-term care residents and assisted living residents and staff, first responders and teachers, um, and now essential workers and individuals with disabilities living in home settings. In just a matter of time, as supply continues to increase, even more Iowans will be eligible. And today I'm grateful for my opportunity to be vaccinated and I am pleased to be joined by my husband, Kevin, and Director Garcia. And as I pledged, I'm pleased to be able to share this moment with Iowans. <laughs> I know you guys fill out your consent forms already. Yep. But do you have any questions about the uh, Janssen or Johnson Johnson vaccine that you're getting today? Nope. Okay. I don't. I just Very appreciate good. it. All right. Thank Good. you. Interesting. Is she done? done. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs>
Okay, with that, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Governor, your emergency order easing restrictions on COVID, uh, easing COVID restrictions ends this Sunday. What are the plans for that moving forward? Well, we've eliminated most of the um, restrictions, the mitigated restrictions that were in the, you're talking about the health disaster declaration. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. So mostly, uh, Marcus, what's in there right now is regulatory relief that I think it's still important that most of that stays in. We'll, re we'll review it later this week to see if there's anything else that needs to be removed. But for the most part, that's, that's uh, information that's in there it really helps um, continue to deal with COVID-19. Governor, President Biden has urged all states to vaccinate teachers, all teachers by the end of the month. Is Iowa on pace to meet that goal? Well, actually, I think we've proven the data has shown and even the CDC has indicated that that's not a prerequisite to get teachers back in the classroom safely and responsibly. But I am really, really proud to say, and we've actually had a lot of our kids in the classroom since August, but I'm really proud to say that we've had over, uh, we, we are projecting that we've had 70% of our educators and team that have been vaccinated already. So school districts across the state have done a really good job of taking advantage of uh, scheduling and working with our providers in getting the, the vaccination. So uh, we, we are ahead of the game and we did that, um, you know, because we wanted to ensure them that they could return to a safe environment uh, as well. So it's, we'll, we'll make that projection. Governor, you mentioned the anniversary that's coming up. You talked about that. How would you, in a kind of self-review, how would you assess your administration's response to the pandemic? Well, you know, I mean, it was every day we learned something new about COVID-19. And so to be able to uh, address that and have the flexibility to make the changes, what I would say is that I have an incredible team that has worked round the clock uh, over the last year. They've put in incredible hours, um, state employees, partners, um, nonprofits, just across the board. People have stepped up and did what they needed to do uh, to um, address COVID-19. And so I'm really proud of just the Herculean team effort that I, I think uh, we've put in place to help serve Iowans through this really difficult time. Can you uh, tell us how uh, effective you think we're being at getting people vaccinated? I looked at the CDC data, and I think I asked you the question, question last week, and, and it's data that shows how many, what percentage of the population have had both vaccinations. Right. And I think we're still at 6%, which is one of the lowest yeah. in the nation. And I'm wondering if, if that's a reflection of, are people resistant to getting the yeah. vaccine? And I know part of your presentation today is People that they need to be vaccinated. Right. Is that an issue in Iowa? Well, so I think I said in my remarks part of it because you did ask this question last week and so we spent a lot of time over the last several days really researching this so we could get to the bottom of it. And what we found was the largest percentage, I think it was over 70%, was tied to our pharmacy providers. And so then we actually, the team actually reached out and called the pharmacy providers to get some sense of what was going on. And what we found is that it was probably tied, the bulk of it has been tied to, once again, to the long-term care partnership and in updating their file that file failed and so they are uh, redoing the file is a not a very technical term but modifying it and we'll try again and we think that that will self correct it's it will uh, correct itself relatively quickly so we should know uh, I think within a short time frame if that's it because I know they're working on getting the file corrected corrected and then we'll just have to continue to monitor that sometimes I mean that's the beauty of Johnson and Johnson it's a single dose and it really is hard as the Dr. Whitaker said to get people to schedule that second dose to get them back there just the logistics of making all of that happen and so this is uh, it truly is a game changer and just for um, um, you know, at, at making it more accessible. It doesn't require the refrigeration. It is safe. And we can really double the population that we can vaccinate in a short time frame. So I'm really excited about what that brings to the table in really helping us, you know, increase our goal of getting Iowa's vaccinated and moving through, uh, moving forward and through COVID-19. Governor, for, for those Iowans who morally oppose abortion and have concerns about how the research process is done, 
to come up and test a vaccine before it's released. Yeah. What, well, what do you say to them? They have the, you know, I think they have every right to confer with their priest, minister, pastor. But I think if you're referring to Johnson & Johnson, the Pope has said that we have a moral obligation to be vaccinated. It's not just about your life, but it's about the life of others. And, um, you know, that it, we should take any vaccine that is available. And uh, Johnson & Johnson, I think, has, you know, defended the research that they've used as well. So, again, um, I think they have been, you know, he's been very forthcoming in addressing that and, again, said that he felt that, you know, we have a moral obligation to be vaccinated, but that's an individual choice. Governor, there's been skeptics of both the Moderna vaccine, Pfizer vaccine, and of course now the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Why choose to get the J&J &J and why now? Me? Yeah. Why did I get it? Well, because because you're starting to hear, which I think, as I said in my remarks, is irresponsible. The data shows they have to go through the same process. We have the University of Iowa team that's actually been part of the clinical trials. They know what it entails. This requires the same thing. And so I wanted to ensure Iowans that I believe it is a safe vaccine afraid to take it. I also didn't want to, you know, I wanted to make sure that our health care workers were vaccinated. I wanted to make sure that our long-term care uh, residents and staff and in our assisted living, that they were able to get the vaccine. I wanted to make sure that essential workers and that um, our educators and, and, you know, other population were able to get the vaccine. And so, you know, we're at 70 percent on all of those that I just listed, long-term care facilities are complete. Um, and so, you know, I felt comfortable. I've had people telling me that I should get it from the very beginning, uh, both doctors and just the medical community. But I wanted to just wait and make sure that we, because we had such limited access to make sure that we met that criteria. But then again, I wanted Iowans to also see that I believe that this vaccine is safe. And so actually the timing of all of that just really worked well for me to be able to move ahead and get that done. Nearly half of the governors have done it. I think you'll see more come on. But again, it's probably a lot of it is tied to just the number, the, the allocation of vaccines that we're receiving. It's been more than 10 minutes since you got that shot. How are you feeling? Why am I surprised I, this is coming from Kay? <laughs> how, how are you feeling? I, we've been hearing that, you know, there's an observation period yeah. to see if there's a reaction. Yeah, I think it's 15 minutes what is what it is. So I feel fine. It, you know, it really, I hardly even felt it. So I, I, I feel fine and I'm very happy to have received it, so. And we just once again encourage Iowans when you get the opportunity, please take advantage of it. And I want you to know also that we're working around the clock with the administration as we get as we see our allocations increase. So we're going to continue to do a great job with our local public health, with our providers uh, across the state to really drive some mass vac vaccine clinics. We're starting to really see that take place. Uh, they're doing a good job of getting the vaccines that we get into the arms of Iowans. What is the prospect of having FEMA or the National Guard set up mass vaccination clinics in Iowa? When do you expect that yeah, to start? Yeah, well, we said if they bring the vaccine with them, we would figure out a way to make that happen tomorrow. But that's not the case right now. And with Iowa being such a rural state, um, you know, on Friday, I'm going to head down to Vermeer and they're going to be doing one. I think it's about 750 doses that they're going to be able to go through. POT has done some great mass vaccination clinics in Pottawatomie County. Scott County did it. Uh, Mason City Cedar, where was it? Sarah Gordo, I think, also had one last week. I'm going to be heading to Fort Dodge, I think, on Saturday. Uh, they have another large vaccination clinic. So I think as Department of Public Health continues to work with our, our local public health and the businesses uh, and just where it makes sense to safely do that, you're going to see as the allocation increases, that's key to all of this, you're going to see more and more of that happening across the state. So we're really, I think they're really starting to get into kind of a rhythm of what that looks like, what it needs, what it takes to set those up. And so I think when those numbers start increasing, we are definitely going to be, you know, ready to go. Governor, based on your... Um the White House briefing yesterday. Can you give people a sense of, I think we hit 100,000 um, receiving, uh, received 100,000 vaccines for the first time this past week. Can you yeah. lay out any of this? Do you get a sense from the federal administration on where we might, where those numbers might be in like two weeks, three weeks, four yeah, weeks, well, anything like that? You know, their, their, their goal is to give us a two and a three month projection. I can tell you they did not say on the call that, you know, when he's
Earlier yesterday evening, the president said he believes that every American will be able to be vaccinated in May, I think was the projections that he made. That did not come up on the call. Uh, we talked a lot about J&J &J and how it was going to take a while for that to kind of get in, you know, to get the uh, manufacturing up and going, but they felt that, you know, they would, they would get there. So up, you know, they are trying to give us some idea of what we will get and what we will be receiving. But just like with Johnson and Johnson, I mean, we got 26,500, am I 25,600 25, um, today, but then we won't next week or the week after. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's constantly moving and adjusting. Governor, just to clarify on the mass vaccination sites, Will the state be leading any efforts to set those up, or are you leaving it to local? We can do both. We're working with, you know, we're working with our our, our private partners. I mean, we've got a great relationship. Hy-Vee's been doing a great job. Other pharmacies across the state, through the uh, retail pharmacy program, are doing some. Um, they're doing clinics and, and administering the vaccine. We're working with some of our manufacturers and communities. So it's across the board. Uh, where we need to step in, we can. But right now, we're, we've got kind of a plan and a process in place. And if we need to do more, we'll adjust. Our vaccines or um, the allocation is increased into the state. Thank you.